Hello everyone, so I'll just get started by putting in the horizon line somewhere here. And next I'll uh, put in the boat, which will be the focal point for me. So it'll be somewhere over here. Maybe a bit to the left. Yep, so that would do. And a few more. Finally, the pier. So that's all that we need to draw actually. I'll just put in Yep, so that's all that we need to draw. Uh, and uh, I'll just uh, put in this uh, light as well. Maybe somewhere here. Maybe here. Need to maintain the perspective. So yeah, yeah, that will look good. Maybe one bit. Uh, yep. So that's pretty much that we need to get started and it's kind of a gloomy sky so i'll be mixing my purples and blues and the water would reflect the colors of the sky so it will be the set almost the same as what we put in for the sky yeah so we'll get started with the first wash and see how it goes right so i've got some uh, neutral tint sepia uh, turquoise blue, cobalt blue, a bit of ultramarine, burnt amber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, uh, a bit of quinacridone rose, a bit of holbein lavender and cobalt teal blue from Daniel Smith. So that's pretty much the colors that I'm going to use for today. We'll start off with the, the gloomy sky first. So I'll spray some water. and mix a bit of a uh, purple. So I'll use a bit of a uh, cob and a bit of rose. The wash becomes a bit more cooler as it moves towards the horizon. So I'll mix that as well at the moment. So that'll be pure cobalt blue, maybe with a bit of a uh, white gouache mixed into it, just to, so I'll keep that ready and I'll mix my Purple. Bit of raw sienna in there as well. All right, so I'll get started. Ah, uh, it's a bit too light. Yeah, that's much better. So it's just. Uh, The paper is somewhat uh, moist because of the water that I sprayed. So I'm getting kind of a uh, loose edges as well as some smooth ones as well. So I keep on doing that. And it becomes a bit more blue towards the horizon. So I'll put that in next. And I'll take the blue all the way into the water. And it 
gradually becomes purple. Bit of lavender in there as well. Too much. I'll put in the pier next, uh, so I'll use a bit of burnt umber into the purple that I mixed earlier. Uh, I don't want it to be too bright because it's on the edge of the painting. I don't want it to uh, compete with the focal point that I'm going to put in later. So, yep, a bit of burnt umber mixed with the purple and just put it in. All right, so that's my first wash. I'll let it dry for a while uh, before proceeding. So it's somewhat dry. I'm going to put in the buildings at the background next. I'll use a bit of turquoise and use the color that I mixed earlier for the pier. I darkened the same mix and put in the boats in the background. It's still uh, a bit more moist, a bit more wet than I want it to be, so I'll just dry it a bit. Yeah, so that's better. Uh, I'll add a bit of uh, burnt umber and put in the pier as well. few dark bits while it's still wet using a bit of sepia and burnt umber and I make use of this wet paint uh, to put in the texture on the 
ground. So as you can see, I'm using a dry brush and making use of uh, the wetness that I created here. A bit more paint in there. And use my pen knife to create a nice clean edge. Yep, so that's it. Need some uh, bright red. I'm using a bit of a uh, Tasman blue from Art Spectrum, so it's kind of a nice opaque pigment. Yep, so that should do. It's now time to get uh, this shape right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wet the paper first. And then use uh, some fairly thick pigment and start at the start at both ends and try to work pigment in the wet water and get that illusion of get that trying to get that three dimensional thing going there. I use the same dark mixture to paint where the boat meets the water. It's, it's usually very dark, so I'll put that in as well for all the boats that I have painted. Yeah, it's all very abstract and maybe a few boats over here as well. I make use of the red that I mixed earlier here as well, just to create it. Right, so next what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put in the masks and finally I'll be putting in all the darker reflections. So I want to do that last so that I can make sure that I put in the reflections according to what I have painted. I want a few dark ones in there and the rest would be fairly pale compared to this one. So one more here. And a dark one over here. So the rest would be fairly pale. 
So I'm using a bit of a lavender into the same mix. I'm trying to get a kind of a nice uh, spacing between these lines so that it looks kind of natural. And a few with the background. And one over here. Trying to put in this uh, light over here, so it's just Yep, so that looks nice and I'll just sneak in a figure over here just to add some interest. Yep, so that's it. So what I'm going to do next is uh, put in the reflections, which is kind of the most important thing in this painting. Uh, so I'll mix kind of a uh, muted green. Uh, I'll make use of this part of the palette where I have some red. So I'll just add a bit of cobalt teal blue in there and try to get the color that I need. lavender as well so this kind of looks like the color that I need and I want it to be a bit more watery yep so that's good
So what I'll do next is I'll take a clean brush. And just run it through the reflections. Bit of pale blue. Yep, so it looks fairly clean, so I don't want to touch this any further. I'll just, just leave it and let it dry. And whilst it's drying, I'll just sneak in a few dark bits over here. It's very important that you don't try to overdo the reflections. It just has to be one, one wash, that's it. If you try to put in other stuff on top of it, it never really looks like a reflection. So that's it. I'll just leave it. And move to the rest of the painting. Yep. So I'm going to dry this completely before adding the final touches. Yep, so that's good. I'm just going to darken this area a bit, uh, the foreground. So I'll use the same Tasman blue that I used before. Very, very pale wash over here. I'm very careful not to disturb the The reflections that I put in earlier so very gently glazing over this and I take this blue into the pier as well so that it kind of harmonizes the painting here yeah. yeah it looks much better with the blue I think I need a bit more Uh, I'm using Holbein John Brilliant one for my highlights. So it's just a few places where I lost the light. Yeah.
All right, so that's it. I kind of enjoyed painting this. It's not... Uh, compositionally, it's a kind of a complex scene because uh, because these strong verticals that we've got here. So I had to place the focal point in a way that it kind of gradually, the horizontals gradually grow and then kind of subside towards the right. I think I kind of uh, got that going and the composition looks fairly nice. I'll just remove the tape and see how it looks with a white border. Just uh, add a few bits here just to connect these two shapes together. Yeah, yeah, that, that reads much better. All right, thanks for watching and just give it a go and see how it goes. And please do subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. Thank you.